Thanks for staying with us. Now, driving through the roads in Lagos has become tough. If you are not trying to struggle your way out of a heavy gridlock, you're faced with continuous banging on your window by street, um, street hawkers. And the most heartbreaking of them all is children trying to clean your window or your windshields in exchange for money or some outrightly begging. So our question is today, why is there a rise of street begging and what threat does this pose? Let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV at Show Africa one with the hashtag Show, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Uti and Mori, I'm going to bring in our guests in a minute, but let me hear your initial thoughts. Do you, you know, I, I mean, we see this every day, especially, I think it's even so much now on the, this side of um, Lagos, I mean, the, on the island, you can't go through Lekki Ekpe Expressway without every traffic light. It's almost like you are sure that they are coming to your window. So let me come to, to you, Uti, first. You know, what do you think is causing the rise of this um, street begging? And you know, what threats do you think it poses for us as a people? So, I mean, uh, the short answer for me in terms of the increase, I mean, I think that there's a, an economic um, there's an economic cause um, there. There's also the fact that you see um, more and more with everything that is happening in Nigeria as a country, you see more and more um, inflow of people into Lagos as well. Mm -hmm. So when these people, you know, you're finding that more and more of them are coming, um, coming into Lagos uh, because there are more opportunities here in terms of heavy motorway traffic, opportunities for them to be able to um, put themselves in positions where they can um, beg. And the, the reality of it is it's sad, but it's true um, that this is where we find ourselves in. And it's a security issue because, yes, they're on the streets begging, but some of these places have become what we are now calling dead spots. So we complain about, you know, drivers and motorists not stopping at traffic lights. But this sometimes is some of the reasons where when you're traveling, you know, later in the day and you find that, oh, there's a traffic light, you see, and so, you know, uh, particularly for me at one particular junction on the way home, um, I, I find there's a lot of young men. And, you know, when you're a lady alone driving at night, you feel very unsafe actually being able to, you know, go in, be driving down the road and you stop at a point and you find that there are three, four young men who, if they believe the opportunity presents itself, can smash your windows and, and, and rob you. So it, it can be quite disconcerting. But yes, it definitely does pose a security risk as well. Absolutely. So let me bring in our guest. Olufumilayo Oni has five years of experience in the development sector focused on building peace and ending poverty faced by women and children. And she is executive director of Irawo Foundation, where she focuses on initiating and implementing economic em um, empowerment programs that advances the role and the rights of women in Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us, Olufumilayo. Thank you for having me. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a, we are happy to have you. Now, um, so you, you've been li listening in on our banter, and we had to bring in Kelechi as well. You know, first of all, I see street begging, the rise of street begging in Lagos, almost more now. It's more of a business, right? Everybody wants to come on the street because they know if they come to... Um, if they come to the roads and they beg, people would actually give them money. So it is now becoming so alarmingly um, 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 on the rise. So what's your assessment on street begging in Lagos? You know, um, in the last two weeks, I've had different forms of experience with street begging. The first one, and it's always with my partner, the first night we went out together to get Mama. And while we were standing, a guy came to us. He should be in his late twenties. He was at his back, and I, I really thought that he wanted to steal his phone. So I kept on looking at him. That oh, dude, hold your phone. Meanwhile, he was whispering to him and telling him to give him quick change, like he needed cash. So we had to leave. On moving to the next junction, we met a lady and a man. So she came to me speaking Yoruba and saying, Auntie, you have to give me money. I am very hungry. She challenged me. It looks like she's been asking people for money and no one gave us. I was really, I mean, no one gave her. I was really frightened. But then we didn't give her any money. The next week, right in front of my house, 
my partner and I were standing there. Okay. And a guy came to meet us. He should be in his late in his late twenties, twenties too. He came to meet us and and spoke and spoke to him in Yoruba. He was talking to my partner that he should give him money. That he's very hungry. Sadly, on that day, we just went out to buy things and we were not with fiscal cash that evening. So. Since he was speaking to my partner in Yoruba and I didn't really understand, my partner did not understand what he's saying because he's not Yoruba. I responded to the guy in Yoruba telling him that, oh, we are sorry, we don't have cash to give you tonight. And he turned to my partner, looked at him and said, oh, why are you letting the woman control you? He told him in English. Wow. He was really aggressive. You know, I felt sad and I felt really unsafe because while he was speaking to me, he made it known that he followed us from one end to the other because he wanted to beg for money from us. And um, around this Yaba Fadei Axulere Axis, before you move 10 feet, there is always someone asking you for money, begging you for money. And I think begging has really become a security issue in Nigeria and not just Lagos. Nigeria has over 20 million beggars on the street. A bulk of them are from the Northeast, um, and, the, and the rest of the beggars are distributed in each in, among different states. But begging is, I do not think that people want to beg willingly. I think that there are so many economic factors that has led many to begging. For example, presently, there is a huge rate of poverty uh, Nigeria used to be the poverty capital of the world two years ago, and food was not this expensive. Um, for people who are salaried, I know that their salary can only purchase about 60% of what they used to buy before. And this would have shown, I also know that because of COVID-19, many people have lost their job. Many new grad, fresh graduates are unable to get a job. And many people are also um, at home, they are unable to look for a new job because of the whole pandemic. Yeah. And this is, begging has really become a security issue. Mm -hmm. But then it is, I see it as a two-way traffic. I do not think that people really want to beg because- um, Are you sure about was, that? about um, two weeks ago. Are you sure about that for me, I want Uti to come in here because when you say that it's not, it's not really a business, I think it is a business, it's become a business, you know? It's become a business because a lot of time you see people being, um, I think maybe what we'll do, let, let's take a break. When we return, we'll, I need to check that um, where the feedback is coming from. We'll see you after the break. Please stay with us.